I did some filming last night. Unfortunately, the film died. Now, what I did, I turned the, I turned the dummy shaft. I want to fit the gears, the box fed gear I'm going to use. It's a 916 inch diameter, so I turned that down. So I had a good gauge to make up to turn the end of the shaft down. So once I get that turned out in 916, that's a nice fit on there. I'm going to put some threads on there. It'll be 916 by 24 TPI. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to machine the nut first. It's easier to make a shaft fit a nut than it is to make a nut fit a shaft. The shaft the nut's going to fit into stainless steel. It's not going to make a stainless nut because stainless steel and stainless steel, uh, it's a bastard to screw together and the threads try to pick up. What I have got, I've got a bronze riser, a previous casting, so I'm going to cut a bit of that off and make it out of that. It'll be nice to screw cut it. It'll also, the, the bronze will cut that's nice for the stairs and look nice as well. This bronze, it's actually alloy bronze, I would call it alley bronze, it's used for bearings. It's very, very slippy, the only way you can put it in the bandsaw is a brand new blade. If the blade's been used on steel, it won't mark it. I keep the blade pure and simply for cutting bronze. As you can see, it's decent stuff, no blow holes in it. Nice bit of alloy bronze. What I'll do, I'll put it in the, the chuck, I'll skin that bit and we'll make one look out of that end. That bit will go back in the pot and melt it down again. See the layer's dirty, it's covered in cutting oil and swarf. I'll clean it off first, there's nothing worse than getting bronze mixed in with the cutting fluid. I'm sure you don't want to watch me clean the layer off, you've seen this do it before. Not really rocket science. One thing I would advise is wear some gloves, just these are just thin latex gloves. Uh, just to stop you cutting your fingers and rubbing on the nasty bits of swarf. All it takes to give it a quick clean off. Put my three jaw chuck back on. Famous tool. Clean up with the threads. Same with the chuck. Little drop of oil. Can't stress how much you must look after the, the register on the lathe. Chuck's not bad, we know, and then I take it apart and give it a good wash out, good blow out. Take the, the tail centre out, please not leave it in because it's got a sharp edge on it. This is a one I bought, it looks quite expensive. I've got it a while now, I only use it for proper jobs, it's not used for running the mill turning. I keep it in its box. Comes with a little, little tool, the little wedge to take the ends out, it's got various shaped ends. The bell sent on various points. There's a conical one there, a hollow centre, that's good. Use that one in conjunction with a use that with a ball bearing in. I always use I use that for uh, doing offset turn for taper turn. Anyway, a nice tool. So it wasn't it wasn't cheap but if it's looked after, it'll last me a lifetime. That will be bronze or bronze riser. You can see it's got a cavity in it, shrunk down as it fed the mould. What I'll do, I'll hold that end and I'll skim that end round just so I can get a good, good hold of it. Need nice sharp tools for machining bronze.
once again I've got my favourite tool in, right arm knife tool. I want to roll with so I can get a hold of the faster thing. I'm going to put the self back on, it's burning shit with me, that. And it's wrong there now. Right, we've got to. A round bit so we can get a we can get a decent hold of it now. You feel it? Front of the end square enough, lock the carriage up. Feed it in by hand. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pop the piece off. And I can board it out with a screw cut, and I'm not going to. I'm not quite sure what, what, what design I'm going to have the nut, but it'll be. It's going to be something fairly fancy. And all I want to sew it with a thread in. Nice stuff. Very nice stuff. It's got a hard, it's got a hard skin, but it's got sand. Depending on the surface where it was cast, I'm gonna try and get one, get a cut, get under that, because it's the blunt that cut that. That's a, that's a tip tool, carbide tool in the blunt. I'll soon look at it. So we get down below it. It's better. Once I get it turned out to a parallel, to a decent finish, I'm just going to park a bit off. Not reasonable. I'll take a bit more off it. Get shot to some of it. What I'll do, I'll put a... I'll put it, I'll centre drill the back and put a centre in it. Take a proper cut then. Heavy cut when you've got the centre in the back. That'll do, that's fine. Pour the tool in. Make sure the pour the tool in the centre heat. Very important. Either on centre height or very, very slightly below. The tool with Allen, Allen bolts on tool posts to fill up with shite. Poke a bit more, a bit more tool out. Looks 
good. Look for the tool square of the job. Can't do anything else when you do that. But I do want to put the centre back in just to give it a little bit of support when I part it off. I wish I can't part it off all the way through with the, the centre in. So all I want is an inch. I've never heard that before. Just enough to make a, a fancy note with that'll do it. When it starts cutting, keep it going. the center off just just touching all but through there Nothing all wrong with finishing the last little bit off with a hacksaw, as long as you put that there. If you got that there, you can, you can go through the hacksaw and you can ride about, it doesn't do any harm. If that's not there, you go through and you hit the bed, not good. I'll put that bit away on my stock cupboard. Most of it will just part it off. What I'll do, I'll work from this end. Not nice and true anyway. But what I can do, I can machine the, I can machine the threads on, and then the nut will be machined on the shaft. Do is square the end up, centre drill it, and get a hole in it. We'll let it work out what size, what size hole we're going to put in. Knock that sharp corner off. Hey, send that to it and then work out what size. What are we going to need? Faster. Nice 
huge pigs in that drill. Well, he's a big one to take more snap than the little ones. Excellent. We need to know the size of the hole at the ball in the nut. At the minute, we've got the end of our mandrel out, which is 9 sixteenths. which is 0.562 of an inch. Now I want 40 thou thread, which is 20 thou side. It's quite simple, you take 40 thou off there, which gives us 5.22. So the size rule we want is 5.22. I'll measure it again. 0.562 minus 40 0.520 okay, 0.522 so I think what I'll do and I'll put this back in the layer and I call it and I'll turn the end of that down to 522 I'll make it 520 and I can use that as a, a trail gauge as a plug gauge for the nut I've already got this a bit of my bar centre on the chuck, I don't want to take it out because I lost the centre, so what I'll do, I'll take the chuck off. I'll take the chuck off. Oh, you bastard. I'll screw the collars with that on. Put a bit of my bottom we're going to use for a gauge. Right, we've got that locked in there. Turn that down to 520. Just square the end off. Measure it. Point six exactly. So one eighty throw off it. Touch it off. Twenty dead on. Right, I've got the chuck back on with a bit of bronze in. I've got me plug gauge. I put a bit of paint on the end so I know that's the that's the size I want. That's five mil. I'll put a new half inch drill through and that's going to get with pretty near half inch size. Half inches 500. And we're just looking at 22 throw. Okay, so I filled a half inch. Measure. Measure's five fell over. Right, so we need that boring out. 
What a nice little boring tool it should fit in there quite nicely. Should just just go in. We don't need much out of this. Put the power feed on, nice slow, nice slow feed. Just have a whisper through. Right. right, so what we've got, that's what 916 size, the wash shaft, which is 562, we've got 522, so we've got 40 thou difference between that hole and the size of the, the mandrel, that's because the 20 thou is side of thread. So it's a nice fine thread, uh, 24 threads an inch. So now we'll need to set the lathe up to cut what the cut what thread in there. What I'll do, I'll put a counter sink in there first just to, to take the edge of it. What a nice shallow angled one there just to just to break the edge. So the thread cutting tool's got a nice a nice lead into it. So now we need, to, we need to set the lathe up, the screw cut. Last thing was screw cut was 24 threads of the inch, so it shouldn't be, shouldn't be too difficult. But if that was gold dust. Or by the head. I'll we'll still finish this one off though. I mean I could go and buy the riding head but I like, I like making things, especially I like making tools I like the satisfaction of making a tool and then using it to make other tools with, it becomes obsessive Right So in theory that's, that's what screw cutting tool that we used the last time it should still be on centre height I'll check it, all I'll have to do is set it up to cut square in the job Once again, I'll be, with it being a shallow thread, the threads are only 20 thou deep. I'll not be offsetting the compound rest to do the thread. I'll be going straight in. Right, we'll check my centre height. Nudges is not much. Right. 
now we need to set up the tool so it's square to the job. Right, to set that tool up, we're going to use what we call a fishtail. This thing here. What we're going to do, we're going to set that square to the square to the lathe chuck. Right, that's square on the lathe chuck, and it's a perfect fit in the V in there. That means that that's going to cut a thread square to the just now we'll be cutting at an angle like that, like that. It's going to be going straight in, nice and square to the job. The change wheels in the back of the lathe are already set up to cut 24 threads to the inch. I've checked. So all we've got to do now is set the gearbox up for 24. So we'll look around here, we'll find 24, which is there, 24, and I want the other wheel, the other lever on position B. So we've got B there, 24 there, that'll cut 24 threads to the inch. We want the other one back here. And we want to slow the, the burst down a fair bit. Right. right, so we've got the change wheel set up for 24 threads to the inch, gearbox is set up for 24 threads to the inch, it's in back gear. Tools dead on centre height, set up, nice and square over the job. Make sure it'll go in, which it will. We've got enough depth we have. Right. Take that scent out of there, save it digging into your arm and hurting. Okay, so I've got my lead screw engaged as normal, carriage is well away from anywhere. Start the lathe up, engage the lead screw, make sure it's going the right way, which it is, it's going towards the headstock. It's no use having it up here and having a practice engage in case it goes crashing in. Just touching there. Right, 24 TPI, it's an 8 TPI lead screw, so basically I can drop the nut in anywhere I want. What I'll do, I'll drop it in on a whole number. Start it up. Thread gel indicator. Right, I'm watching for my thread gel indicator coming around. The red mark, the paint mark, that's the one I use when I'm cutting metric. Just past the whole number, which is the 4. We've got a half number. Coming out to number one, we're certainly we are not. Along the combs. That's it engaged. Stairs when it's engaged, so that stops turning. The carriage starts to move. I can slow it down on me. Slow it down the inverter control. Just touching, just scratching the thread. Watching for it to throw. See it come through the back of the job. There's plenty of room because the hole in the chuck's bigger than. Right, it's through. So we'll just take the exhaust. Zero. Zero across slide. When you're in, 30 thou to clear it. Back out. Cross slides won't back out to zero. Put a cut on, put a five thou cut on. Right, we're watching again for our indicator coming round. Normally you would do it faster, unless you run the lathe a little bit faster, but it's, it's pointless. 